Whoa. Oh, hey. Welcome to Science Time with Jody. I'm Jody. This is the show where we take your out-of-this-world questions and bring them down to Earth. This show is created in partnership with the Moorhead State University Star Theater, where I am a planetarium operator, and with the Challenger Learning Center of Kentucky, where I am an alumni of many of their STEAM programs, as well as an original member of the STEAM team. I will leave links to all these amazing places in the description below, so you can like and follow them to find out all the cool things they have going on. And thanks for beaming in. And I love those beaming smiles on your faces too. Wasn't that a cool entrance? I got to teleport just like they did on Star Trek. And fortunately, teleporting is still science fiction, at least for now. But something that was long thought to be science fiction is soon going to be a reality. Humans are actually going to be living in space. And to, that actually brings me to today's Out of This Out World of the question. World. Today's Out of This World question comes from Zeke and Sam. And they ask, when will humans be able to explore Mars? Well, there are a lot of challenges just to get someone to Mars. Uh, here's a Mars in a Minute video that details most of them. How do you get to Mars? If you want to send a spacecraft all the way to Mars, first you'll need a fast rocket to escape the pull of Earth's gravity. The heavier your spacecraft, the more powerful your rocket needs to be to lift off. Next, make sure you launch at the right time. Mars and Earth orbit the Sun at different speeds and distances. Sometimes they're really far apart, and other times they come closer together. About every two years, the two planets are in perfect positions to get to Mars with the least amount of rocket fuel. That's important. The total trip is over 300 million miles. Finally, make sure your aim is right. You can't shoot for where Mars is at launch time. You have to aim for where it will be when you get there. It's a lot like how a quarterback passes a football. Also, you may need a few thrusts to correct your direction along the way so you don't miss Mars. If all goes well, you'll get to the red planet in about seven or eight months. Then, if you actually want to land on Mars, well, that's a whole other challenge. See what I mean? There are lots of problems to solve. But never fear, NASA is here, and they have a plan. A new plan for a new space age. A plan called Artemis. Artemis is NASA's plan, and it starts by having a human presence on the moon in 2024. From this lunar base, they will then launch to Mars in the 2030s. I recently had an amazing opportunity to meet the administrator of NASA, Jim Bridenstine. And he was really excited about Artemis and all the amazing things NASA has going on. I'll leave links to Artemis in the description below so you can learn more about it. So you may be wondering, why are we launching from the moon instead of from Earth, since it's a lot easier to live on the Earth? Well, it all comes down to, get this, gravity. What, what's that? What's gravity? I'm so glad you asked. Let's investigate. So, gravity is when one body of mass attracts another body of mass towards its center. Some examples are when you jump. Gravity always brings you back down to Earth, so you don't have to worry about floating away into space. And in 2018, I had an amazing opportunity. I got to meet astronaut Joan Higginbotham, and she said many things that stuck with me. But one of the most important things she said, now get this, gravity is heavy. You may be wondering why I'm saying this, since, you know, I don't feel it, you don't feel it. Well, it's because we've been in gravity our whole lives. But for Joan Higginbotham, she spent 13 days on the ISS, just out of Earth's reach of gravity. So, by the, so she got used to not being in gravity. So by the time she came down to Earth, when she tried to stand up, she started to fall over. But don't worry, she's still up and walking till this day. So. Another example, you and me. We have gravity. Something interesting, whenever we run, walk, jump, move anything, catch a ball, anything we do, it moves the earth. And not just in like the ground shaking way, but literally just dropping this, it moves the earth. It all has to do with things with mass have gravity. We have mass, all these objects have mass, therefore they have gravity. What's keeping something like this ball from just sticking to me constantly is the amount of gravity we have compared to the Earth. 
We have very little gravity compared to the Earth, so the Earth takes most of the priority. But it doesn't mean we don't have an effect on it. Just by dropping this ball, it actually causes gr the Earth to move. It is a negligible amount, but it happens. And for our last example, the Moon. The Moon has one-sixth the gravity of Earth, but that is more than enough to cause something as massive as the ocean tides. Have you ever heard of an astronomer named Galileo Galilei? He did a lot of important work in finding things out about gravity. His theory was basically, if you were to take objects of different sizes and shapes and weights and drop them from the same height, they would hit the ground at the same time. Well, I have this hammer and I have this feather. Let's find out. Hmm. Let's try that again. So it doesn't seem to be working, but that might mean Galileo was wrong. Why is that? Oh, that's right! There's another part of his theory I forgot to mention. It has to be in a vacuum. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of vacuum you clean your floors with. I'm talking about an area of space that has no air. So there's nothing like air resistance to slow down the descent of something like a feather or anything, really. So you may have heard the term the vacuum of space. Space is a one big open area with very little gas in it. So if we could just get there, we could try this out. Unfortunately for most of us, we will never have this chance, but someone actually did, and they took that chance and ran with it. His name was astronaut David Scott. He did this exact experiment on the Apollo 15 mission in 1971. Here's a video of it you can check out. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Five, five, six, proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Superb. So what'd you think? Wasn't that cool? So basically, because there's no air, it falls at the same rate. Something interesting, that hammer and that feather are still exactly where he dropped them on the moon. It all has to do with the knees of, well, the suits. They didn't exactly have the best knees, so if they dropped something, they couldn't really bend down to get it. Let's hope they didn't drop anything important. So, to sum it up, the moon has less gravity than Earth. Because if there's less gravity, it's easier to launch from the moon. So, here is my down-to-earth answer for today's out-of-this-world question. The question that Zeke and Sam asked is, when will humans be able to explore Mars? It all starts with NASA establishing a lunar base by 2024. From that base, they will then launch from the moon to Mars in the 2030s. So, now let's take a closer look at gravity with these explore-at-home activities. So for our first Explore at Home activity, we have the Tech Check. For this, you will need your parents' permission to go online. Once you're there, you need to find a website called NASA Space Place. From there, you'll find the Game section, and then click on a game called Explore Mars. In this game, you get to, you guessed it, Explore Mars. You get to do this by programming a rover to go around and collect resources. And while you're on the Space Place, you might want to check out Perseverance, NASA's newest Mars rover. It's even going to be housing the first helicopter to ever be in space. It's right up there with that car. Anyways, if you want to learn more about Perseverance, you can check out NASA Space Place. And if you want to know when it's going to launch, it's going to launch in July of 2020. But I'll leave a link in the description below, so that way you can figure out to the second when it's going to launch with this countdown. For our second Explore at Home activity, we have Object Drop. For this, you will need your parents' permission to find objects that, 
you can drop. Also to find a place that you can drop. You don't want to break like a glass or a phone and you don't want to harm tiles or break a glass table or something else. So once you have your permission and your place and your objects, you just need to, much like David Scott with his hammer and feather, hold them at the same height and drop them. You, can, you don't have to use a hammer and a feather. You could even use Legos in a ball, a plate and some Legos, or you might be using the two of the same thing, or you might jump yourself to see if you can match it. But you don't have to use just these. You can use just about anything you have around you, again, with parents' permission. And that brings me into today's third Explore at Home activity, Jumpin' Jams! For this activity, you are going to need your favorite tune, also known as a jam, and your enthusiasm. For this, you'll create a workout that goes along with your favorite tune. The only requirement is that it has to involve jumping. <laughs> I'll show you some moves you can use. You can, jump on, you can jump with an arm in the air, the other, one leg in the air, the other. You could jump in a circle. You could try and jumping the other way. <laughs> or, it was Easter recently, so you might want to try and be a rabbit. Here's mine. So what'd you think? And don't worry, if you have a disability that prevents you from, you know, jumping, no worries, we have you covered. All you have to do is use your arms, bob your head, or move any body parts you can to create your Jumpin' Jams workout. So, Zeke and Sam, I hope I answered your awesome, amazing, out of this world question. And thank you again for asking. And I'd like to hear from you too. If you have an out of this world question you'd like me to bring down to earth, then leave a comment in the comment section below. Or if you have a question, comment, maybe even a picture or video of your Explore at Home activities, then put them in the comment section as well. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. To, that way I know you enjoyed it. Thanks for that, by the way. And thank you for watching Science Time with Jody, the show where we bring your out-of-this-world questions down to earth. See you next time.